afternoon. Thank you so much for joining me for, I think we're on day nine, according to my calendar. We are on day nine of 31 Days to Love Your Lettering, and today we're talking about adding color. Good afternoon. Thank you, ladies. Um, thank you so much for your patience. I know I'm a few minutes late. Uh, if you follow Chaotic Blessing and Bold Turquoise, you know that they are in the midst of a big planner reveal. And so <laughs> I was kind of on there for a few minutes while I caught the beautiful stuff that they've just released um, for Happy Planners and uh a5 planner so I just had to go check that out so thank you for waiting around for me I do appreciate it I tried to get over here as soon as I could um, thanks for coming on in I hope you've had a great week um, it's been so much fun for me to be going through this 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 month again um, because I find that now that all the posts are up for you guys to kind of self pace through I get to do these demos and kind of look more closely at um, how I'm showing you the letters and get to have fun with that. Um, so yesterday I told you that this weekend I'll be sending out a bonus to subscribers. And so I've been busy all day finishing up those guide sheets. So I'll give you, when I flip the camera around, um, or you know what, I'll give that peek at the end. Because as you know, if you... <laughs> Oh, thank you, Ricky. Um, uh, our afternoon sessions are have um, a little demo spot kind of in the middle. I'll get to a formal introduction and then flip into demo mode where I won't be answering questions while I'm demoing, but I will open for questions at the very end of the broadcast because my hope is that little demo portion, I'll be able to move over to YouTube later on for those people that are interested in um, catching the demonstrations but not able to sit through the chat. The chat, of course, is one of my favorite parts, and if you enjoy a very chatty live interactive Periscope, then the 930 slot of the Love Your Lettering will be the one that you want to catch. It's the same demonstration. We talk about the same technique as the afternoon session. It's just a little more chatty, a little more live interaction. Um, so with that being said, let's go ahead and get started. Thank you so much for joining me today. My name is Lisa. I blog at creatively.com, looking at life creatively. We are almost towards the middle of um, 31 days to love your lettering. We are on the day nine instruction, which is adding color. So we're going to take the principles of what we did yesterday with faux typography and faux calligraphy, and we're going to add a punch of color into the middle of the letter. So I'm going to go ahead and get ready to flip the camera so that you can see what we're doing today, and then I'll show you links for where you can find more information about this series, um, and send me a message if you need to have any question answered. Okay, so there's the sample that's part of the blog post. Um, so this is what we're going to do. So this you'll recognize as the faux uh, typography that we reviewed yesterday and the faux calligraphy. But here I've left that inside empty and then filled it with color. And then this is just kind of whimsical lettering the same way and did kind of a fun coloring technique with that. So that's what we're going to go over today. All right. If you are new to this broadcast and you would like more information about the Love Your Lettering series, you can go to creatively.com slash loveyourlettering, and that will bring you to all the information, including a link to the index of the series where you can go through each lesson self-paced. There are videos that are embedded on the bottom, and that is from uh, the October, the live um, the live presentation of this series. You can find me on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. I'm at creatively or slash creatively on most places, except for Pinterest. On Pinterest, you can find me as creatively made. And um, I do have some quote, I have a quote board on there for things that I kind of stockpile for when I practice lettering. And then I also have a lettering and penmanship board um, for you to follow if you're so interested. Okay. So today we're going to get started with pencil. So I've flipped to a clean page in my notebook, um, and I'm holding my paper 
uh, landscape just so that I have more room to demonstrate for you. You can hold the book whichever orientation is most comfortable for you. And I'm working with a mechanical pencil. This is the Olno pencil from Tombow. Um, it's really kind of fun. I got it during the planner sale and the neat thing about it is that you don't just have to press on it up here to forward the lead. You can also bend it at this point and I don't know if you can see that, it, it, it extends the lead that way. So this has become one of my new go-to pencils. And so that's what I'm using today to get started. Um, so I'm going to start with the word color in the faux calligraphy technique. And the reason why I'm starting in pencil instead of pen, like yesterday we started with pen, and we were filling in that bold spot. So it didn't matter if I had sketchy lines because I was going to cover that all up. Since I want to leave those spaces empty to add color, I want to start in pencil so that I can erase my work um, before adding the color. So again, I'm going to um, do some cursive lettering, nice and big, leaving some room. So I'm pressing a little bit hard just so that you can see what I'm doing. You may want to go a little bit lighter to be sure that you'll be able to fully erase your lines. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and add those broad areas of the down strokes. So sometimes I'll bring that in on the outside, sometimes I'll bring it in on the inside, depending on where I need to close up some of that counter or interletter space. And again, I'm not too worried about these. Go ahead, Francesca, can you please take this off? Um, okay. So. So you see it takes me a couple tries to get the look that I'm going for. Okay. And then what I'm going to do is go over that with a fine line pen. So I'm going to use the Zig Millennium 08, which is a pigment ink, which is light fast and waterproof. Sorry about that. Okay, so I'm going to go back over and outline the outsides of what I've, the guidelines I've made here. Take a look at it and make sure I've gotten all the spaces. Okay. So you can see my pencil marks in there. Um, and my black pen around it. Alright, so now normally I would give this just a couple minutes to ensure that the ink has dried before I erase because if I go too fast, um, it's going to pull the ink. So I'm going to go ahead and while I'm making sure that's drying, I'm going to go ahead and write. Um, punch and print. So again, when I'm doing the faux typography, I'm going to start with um, just the basic forms of the letters, leaving lots of room. And I 
should have done that with pencil first and I didn't. Oh my goodness. So sorry about that. Um, all right. <laughs> Sometimes that happens, right? Okay, so I'm going to go ahead back with the pencil to make these, these heavier marks. kind of got ahead of myself there and sometimes that happens um, and you're certainly welcome to work in pen first however I find that um, I usually need a little bit of wiggle room and erasability when I'm making these bolder lines I'm going to add a little terminal onto there So now I'll go ahead and trace those in the pen. I am a little closer than I would like to be there, but for the sake of the demonstration, I think that we'll still be able to see just fine. Okay. And so the idea behind doing the guideline in pencil first is that we don't have to make those sketchy lines with the ink that we're not going to be able to erase or color over since we're going to use colored pencil um, or watercolor instead. If you are just filling it in with black ink then by all means if you have those sketchy lines you can fix that as you color. Okay and now one more word. I'm going to write fun and I'm going to do that kind of whimsical style which is um, for for this demonstration I would say it's kind of a blend of um, of print and cursive so kind of italic-ish letters that have some curls and so I'm going to go with a big spiral on the F and a very curly um, curvy U and the N would be kind of the inverse of that and curl that up as well. And so now to make these thicker I'm going to use the same method and that anywhere that the pen stroke would have come down that's what I'm going to go ahead and add that second line that's kind of broad. And I'm going to go ahead and curl up here and add that terminal. And let's make a curvy crossbar. Okay, so let's see. I'm going to start here and come down for that U. Um, I'm going to bring this one out here. And then the end will come down here. There, and then a nice little terminal on there, and then again, go ahead and trace with my trusty black pen. So I'm working pretty big, so sometimes I do have to lift the pen to move my hand. up that end and bring this around. So I'm going to stop there so that I can do this loop all in one swoop. So if I have to pick up the pen, I usually try to do that on a straight down. Sorry, I think probably zoomed in is trying to focus a little too much. Um, I try to stop on a straight part because it's easier for me to pick back up that stroke um, rather than trying to do that in the midst of a curve. So that may help. So, okay, now while this one dries, we should be good to go to erase up top here on the color. 
and I'm using the Mono non-PVC plastic eraser. Um, I find that it gives me a good clean, um, clean erasing and the mess kind of, there's not the shavings, it just kind of stays together so it's easy to clean up from. So, you can see my pencil is definitely going away. Now we've got our letters in place and we're going to color. Um, I grabbed whatever colored pencils were handy. These are woodless colored pencils that I was able to find at Michael's, um, but whatever colored pencils you have handy. Um, in the past I've used Prismacolors. They're a nice high pigment, low wax um, colored pencil. I, I currently have the Tombow Erotogen and um, and the recycled pencils on my wish list because I don't know if you if you have t um, the Prismacolors you may notice that when you're sharpening those the tips the, or the leads tend to break quite frequently and I found out that the Tombow colored pencils actually have the lead glued to the wood so that you don't have that constant breakage as you're sharpening okay so now there's a couple ways to color in I'm going to go with a purple so that you can see. All right. So one way would be just to go right in and color the whole area. And you're going to go ahead and color into all those strokes that you've added that, that heavy down stroke. Okay. Now, the higher pigment colored pencils or the artist quality colored pencils are going to be a little bit easier on your hands to get the nice bold color. Sometimes the less expensive colored pencils are high wax and so in order to get that nice bold and vibrant color you're having to press hard where with the very rich pigment ones you can just go over it a couple times to bring out that brightness without pressing real hard into the paper. Um, Hopefully that helps. Okay, so you can color it in completely, or you can do kind of an ombre effect up. So I'll start at the bottom, and the first time I'll make the pass almost up to um, the arch of the H, and I've gone pretty light. Now the next time I'll go over it a little bit heavier, but stop a little bit lower, and each time. I'm going um, just a little bit lower than I did before so that the color is kind of concentrating at the base and fading as it goes up. So we'll do this one kind of zoomed in. Okay, right, so I start off kind of lightly going through and kind of letting go a little bit more as I go up the letter. Now the next time I come in Again, I'm concentrating towards the bottom and then going lighter and lighter, but now stopping a little bit sooner. And you know, one more pass, again, heavier towards that base, and then letting go up. So that'll give you that ombre look or the gradation. So, gives the letters some dimension too. Again, you don't necessarily have to press real hard, you just need to go over those sections a couple times to lay down some more color and it'll build up that intensity.
Okay. So there's our word punch because I find that when you change the coloring effects, it does add a bit of punch to what you've done. Okay, now on this other one where I've gotten, I've got some fun written, I'm gonna take this ombre effect, but I'm gonna go two different colors, one from the top and one from the bottom. So let's go with a pink, sorry. I'm gonna go with a pink and maybe an orange. So these are woodless, so um, one of my children dropped the package and it's cracked, but that's okay. It still works. So I'm going to start at the top and kind of, I'm going the opposite as I did before. So I'm starting up here and I'm going lighter and lighter and lighter as I go down and then going over just a couple more times to intensify the color at that very top. You can think up lots of different color blends. Complementary colors that can meet in the middle. There I've got my the top done, and now I'm going to go from the bottom up, just like I did in the word punch. I'm going to start low and come up, kind of crossing over, letting the lightest parts of each color cross into each other. So it kind of goes a little faster on the second color because you're just going to meet that first color that you laid down. Okay. So now if you're working a little fast like I am now and you have these spots that go outside of um, of the black line you don't have to start again there's actually something available um, to help you with that okay um, I am a brand ambassador for Tombow so occasionally they send me products that I get to try out and one of my favorite things that they've sent is the um, the sand eraser. Now this one is both sand, it's sand eraser on one side and rubber on the other, but this sand eraser can be used to erase ink and colored pencil. Um, it has just a little bit of grit which allows it to um, pick up the mistakes because um, it's kind of sanding it away. So it works best when you're working on high quality paper, which are definitely the product projects that you don't want to start over again for just a small mistake. So I can just clean that up real easily. So there you have three different techniques for adding color to your lettering. And one more thing that you can do for fun, um, if you have a gray colored pencil or even black that you can work pretty lightly with, you can add a shadow around your lettering. And so for that, I just use the gray on the edge of the, um, of the letter and then just kind of go a little bit lighter on the way out. So it ends up making the font look like it's floating a bit. So you can do that just on one side as a drop shadow or you can do it behind 
the whole letter depending on the effect that you're going for but it just adds just another add some more added dimension to your work so this is a great colored pencil you can use a regular drawing pencil too if you don't have gray in your set And I would add them under the terminals also, since they're a heavier part of the letter. Okay, so there you have it, adding color to your creative lettering. So if you guys have questions, I'm going to go ahead and open for questions now. So thank you so much for your patience during the demonstration. Um, it's a learning process for me to not answer the comments as they come. Which colored pencils do I recommend? There are many choices. Um, I would recommend getting the highest quality that you can within your budget. I am not, I'm certainly not advocating for you to buy something outside of your budget. So just buy the best um, that's within your budget. If you um, can only afford a couple of dollars on colored pencils, the Crayola is a pretty good um, a pretty good use of your money. You can get a lot of colors and they're slightly more pigmented than say like the Rose Art or the Store brand. Um, so Crayola would be kind of the, my first choice. It's what I normally give my children to color with or when they do Picture Smart Bible they use Crayola because it gives them some blendability as they layer colors over each other. Um, and it's, like I said, it's a little bit more pigment than wax than the other ones are. Um, Certainly, if you have a coupon and a little extra money to get the Prisma colors at, like, if you have a local craft store like Michaels or Hobby Lobby, um, Prisma colors or Faber Castell, they're artist quality colored pencils. And also, Tombow has them online and on Amazon. They're um, recycled colored pencils, which are. Um, it's recycled wood, but it's the leads are, I believe, the same quality as the the higher um, artist grade that's on there. And the neat thing about them is that the the lead is adhered to the wood. Um, what other supplies can you use to color other than pencils? Yes, you can certainly use a watercolor brush. Um, any any inexpensive set will do. This is a watercolor set that was from Target, and so this was the UB brand. I do like the semi-moist watercolors, and you'll know they're semi-moist when you can see that bit of shine. Prang, P-R-A-N-G, is another brand that's fairly inexpensive, um, and so it's those are a good way to start too and you can do that with a paintbrush or with a, a water brush um, so like this is a water brush from from Michaels and you just fill the barrel with water um, you can also use marker or use crayon there's lots of different things it's um, use what you have certainly until if you choose to add more supplies um, I'm getting that second line more smooth I saw your your comment um, a lot of times it just takes practice and if you're doing it in pencil first you're giving yourself a little more leeway to erase and redefine as to to your liking a little bit better so I would certainly um, recommend practicing any of these techniques in pencil if you want just a little more practice without feeling like you're having to cross out or start over again a pencil and eraser is a great training tool for creative lettering and even calligraphy um, so that would be definitely something that I would recommend. Um, do we have any other questions? Oh, you're so welcome, Lori. Um, all right, so I promised you a sneak peek, and so I'm going to give you that. So subscribers to my blog this weekend um, will be getting an update from me. So if you go to this page, there is a little subscription button towards the bottom of that. Um, and if you probably either Saturday or Sunday is when the newsletter will go out and it's going to include um, I've got a sheet for the faux typography 
and I'm working on the faux brush calligraphy now. And so I do have a question for you all. Um, so if you see how I formatted this sheet, I've got the uppercase or capital letters and the lowercase and then a couple of variations on some of the letters. Um, and I've kind of made my notes handwritten um, in gray, so this will be scanned in and made digital and it'll be in PDF to you guys. Um, and I've done one letter step by step because you're going to use the same technique for all the letters. Um, and so the A made sense for me for this sheet, I thought, um, because it kind of starts with a foundation letter and then you're adding the wide one, adding the feet, and then the crossbar and little details and then a slight variation for some whimsy. Um, so now I need to choose a single letter to do step by step on the top of this one. So which letter do you think, and it'll be a capital or uppercase letter, um, but which letter do you think would be most helpful um, to get and drawn out a little bit bigger? Uh, if you have received anything from me in the past, whether it be blog posts and or um, a digital download, you do not need to subscribe again. If you've confirmed your subscription, um, you will get an email this week. A Y or an M. Hmm. Okay. M W. Yeah, I like the W because that's my last name initial, J or B. I thought about doing the B because the B is a fun one. Well, the B, R, and the K would be somewhat similar. So that's what I'm going to choose is one that repeats in other letters as well. So it might be it might be the B because, see, if you, do, if you look closely, you've got the B, the P, and the R are all very similar. So it's going to be kind of the same technique. It's just changing and the K is like that too. I'm just not done with this page yet. So you guys will see this weekend which one I actually choose. So how was this week for you? Um, did you find that you fell behind or do you feel like it went a little too fast? Um, we are at a weekend and the weekends are for catch up and finding um, inspiration. So if you look at, I think the next blog post, all it is is going to be links to um, practice pages that I've done in these styles and then a link to my Pinterest boards for lettering and um, lettering and quotes and things like that for practice. And also, um, if you've never heard of a pangram before, a pangram is a sentence that contains all 26 letters of the alphabet at least once. Um, and so those are a fun way to practice your lettering. Um, and that's what the weekends are for. You can work ahead on those things, the inspiration pieces, or, um, or you can go ahead and just catch up on whatever days you miss. You wish there were assignments like homework, like specific things to write. We're going to have to do um, challenges, I think, probably monthly challenges for the months that I'm not doing live demonstrations. Um, for those of you that might have been new to the Love Your Lettering series, it's a series that I originally wrote in October of 2015. Um, Oh, good. Yes, you should definitely continue, Heather. And I still owe you an email back. I have not forgotten. Um, but so I've decided that, like, yeah, this series was written in October, but every month since then, I've had some new people that have found the series and are getting into it. And even though all the... Um, all the posts are on the blog and they do have videos in there. There's something about the live interaction for each new, you know, large group that comes through um, that it's just fun to catch up the live version. And so what I decided was that this year for 2016, um, once a quarter, I'm going to do the month long demonstrations again. But I think a good way to keep everybody continuing to work on their lettering is if we have um, some lettering or quote challenges on the months that we're not doing live. Um, that should be fun. You're so behind. You're throwing a baby shower tomorrow instead of catching up. It's okay. You're never fully behind. Um, yeah, Jenny, I lost count somewhere, but then I went back to the original index, and according to that, we're on day nine, and we've not missed anything, except I think some of our catch-up days got jumbled up. But as far as the instruction, that as the posts are written on the Love Your Letter, the original 
Tale series. We are caught up to day nine and it brings us to another weekend catch up. So I know as I type that out this afternoon, I'm like, I am going to confuse everybody. Um, I would probably post the challenges on both Instagram and um, the Facebook group or the Facebook page. Sorry. Um, and then maybe do a once a week uh, catch up. I don't know. I'll have to brainstorm that. You guys can help me throughout this month to brainstorm how we move forward because that's always the great challenge is after we get through a month together, we need to kind of pick up the momentum to keep going and keep ourselves accountable to practicing because the practicing makes all the difference in the world. I know I've heard lots of you say throughout the series before and this time you're like, well, my letters just don't look like yours and I can't get them smooth and this and that and the other thing. Um, and I've been doing this for over two decades and um, <laughs> I still practice every single day. Anytime there's a bit of scrap paper around me, um, it's usually covered in alphabets. So, the, okay, I'm going to have to sign off here. <laughs> but thank you so much for joining me this afternoon. I will be back on at 930 for our more chatty version of the Love Your Lettering. And I look forward to seeing you all um, Monday if I don't see you tonight. Have a great um, Love Your Lettering would be the hashtag. Sorry. I will talk to you guys later or on Instagram.